And through the uh, magic of video, we have more here that uh, is complete. Actually, what really happened was I ran out of storage space um, and didn't really uh, know that, so I was doing stuff that didn't get recorded. But I'm going to go through some things um, here that I talked about just to, to uh, uh, go over them again and make sure that you kind of know what I've been doing. First of all, you can see that what I have is I finally put in some, some black here. So I'm using my, uh, my darkest uh, charcoal pencil and putting in now the, the darkest values. So with the darkest values, I can go in and go in really as, as, as hard as I like and, and put those in. So now is a good time to start thinking about what are the, the darkest values and the lightest values. So for example, the hair, um, the hair here is going to be, is going to have some of the darkest values in it. And um, I'm just kind of putting this, you know, really kind of as, as black as I can. She has brown hair, kind of auburn or something, but most of it's in shadow, so it's fairly dark. Now as I'm doing this, what I can hope you see is that I'm not drawing individual strands of hair. That's something I see a lot of students do, and that is a bit of a problem. Um, you don't really draw individual strands of hair, at least for the most part. And you know, I've got a few right out here, and I could do maybe like a little bit here at the very edge, but you want to keep away from doing individual strands of hair uh, because that just, that's not how it works. You don't really see and notice that in something like this. So look at really any of the, of the uh, great uh, portrait painters and see what they're doing with hair and you won't really see individual strands. So with hair, like with anything else, you want to think of highlight, midtone, and shadow. Where's the highlight, where's the midtone, and shadow? I've had students ask me, well, how do I differentiate the hair you know, from, and I say, from what? Well, from anything else. Well, you don't really. I mean, it's just highlight, midtone, and shadow. So you're going to look there, and, and that's what you're going to try and depict, is the highlight, midtone, and the shadow there uh, of the hair. And this hair is mainly in shadow, and so that's how we're going to keep it here, mainly in shadow, with a little bit of, of, of highlight uh, on, this, uh, on this right edge as it's facing, uh, facing the light. And so we're going to come down here and kind of suggest that. But really with hair, so often less is more. You just want to suggest the major areas of the hair um, as kind of big shapes and not get into trying to draw individual strands. Because that just doesn't work. It's not really what it looks like anyway. So you shouldn't be drawing lines uh, for hair like individual strands. I'm just doing kind of rough and loose scribbles, really just suggesting where these major masses are. And coming back in and with my eraser here and uh, doing a bit of erasing to show that highlight area of the hair. It's actually what we want. So really kind of be careful with the hair and don't go into it. It generally does not need a whole lot of, of detail there. Okay, so um, a few other things you can see that what I've done is I'm really starting to add some more shadow. And um, as I was drawing this in the very beginning, I knew there were very dark areas like this right here, but I didn't need to go very dark very quickly. So the more I hold off going dark and kind of build up gradually and gradually and very, very lightly, you know, the, the better it will tend to be. And so I can come in at this point when it's getting closer to being done and add those, those shadow areas in. Add those in where they, where they need to be. I'm going to do a little bit of racing here to kind of fine tune uh, this, uh, this, uh, this arm here. And uh, the arm is, is a pretty definite uh, profile here. Uh, there's, no, there's no foreshortening, no bending. It's just a very, very straight arm. And that means that you can really get the structure in uh, fairly easily. Some things to, to recall here. If I hadn't mentioned them before, it's that you know, you've, I'm, I'm suggesting the, the uh, deltoid here, a little bit of bump out here at the elbow. Right here is the bicep, where it kind of tapers in, the bicep is facing us. And then we have this um, part here where kind of there's a group called the supinator group which wraps around. Now notice how thin the wrist is here. This is because there's no muscle. This is just bone. You have the two bones of your lower arm and you have tendon, and that's it. 
So especially in the female figure, but really in all figures, what you're going to have is a really nice taper. There should be a very delicate, very, very delicate taper there toward the wrist. And that's what we want to see right here with this. And um, we're in a lot of shadow because it's on the shadow side of the body. And the body is casting this shadow over here. So I'm keeping this fairly dark. In fact, when we get over here to the hand, the hand is almost black. And the thing about it is that's kind of nice. It makes it a little easier. So really, I just want to make sure I have that, the shape of that hand uh, correct as I'm doing this. And uh, that's, that's really all I need. So um, the hand tends to be a very kind of wedge shape. And also, you notice that there are some very angular parts to it. So notice how it changes direction right here at the wrist. And I probably need to maybe move that up a little bit. But there's kind of a change in direction, like a little angle right there. And the little angle there, a little bump where the knuckles are. But what's kind of nice about this is that this hand is really in a lot of shadow. So I can just sort of leave it there. I don't have to put any detail in it. It's just all kind of in shadow. I'm going to lighten this part up just a little bit, but we really have a lot of shadow happening there. And so that's kind of something to keep in mind. If something's in shadow, keep it that way. Don't make up details that aren't there. This hand is pretty much just like a silhouette, a silhouette in shadow, and I'm going to keep it that way and not try and draw in extra fingers or um, even fingernails or something if they're not visible. If they're not visible, they're not visible. That's part of the visual story is that they are in shadow. So let's, let's keep them that way. All right, so that's pretty good there. At some point, I could come along here and kind of fine tune this outer edge. And this is, I talk about not doing, uh, not jumping into doing outlines, not trying to outline the figure and then come back later and fill it in. This perhaps would be appropriate time to come back in and fine tune those edges or do some outline. But it's only when I've gotten to this point here. All right, so as I'm moving along, uh, one thing that you missed out on that I was doing was some highlights here. So I'm using this white Conti crayon and I'm putting in these white highlights. So I'm seeing what are the brightest parts of the figure, and they're really all going to be facing the light source. Uh, often the breasts are going to catch a lot of light as they come up here, especially on this, this, uh, this uh, highlight side. And if I've got any, um, any kind of charcoal left uh, lying around here from previous, previous sketching, I'm going to erase that out and then take my white and start drawing that white in. So this is just a nice little thing to add. The newsprint is not particularly white. It's a bit of an off-white, so now I'm putting, I'm putting um, the real white in just to add those really nice highlights and make those kind of pop out. And that's kind of what I'm wanting to see here. And so it's a combination of erasing, we talked about that reductive drawing here, and then the white uh, to, to really give you the, the brightest parts there. So um, as I'm dealing with things like, like the nipples, again, I'm dealing with the areolas here, with the idea that you know they don't both point at you. Because they come out at an angle, if one is facing you, one is going to be away. And so we're not really facing um, any one nipple right here. They're both pointed away just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. What that means is, notice I've got less space here on the outside and more space on the inside. More space inside, less space outside with our positioning. And so what that does is it shows me that they aren't parallel to each other, pointing at me, they're kind of pointing off to the side, laterally. laterally. And that's an important thing to get right. Um, we sort of have this impression in our minds of what, what um, uh, breasts are, and often that comes from uh, thinking about them in the wrong way or, or uh, looking at the wrong type of media. But we really need to see what's, what's going on here. Also notice this shadow side. Because of the placement of the light, again, highlight shadow, highlight shadow. And this uh, is going to help with this idea of them kind of going up and down, up and down. 
So I'll just kind of move this shadow, work it up here. And um, this is where the, the blending blending stick really comes in nicely. You notice how this one I've had here is kind of a soft one. It's just a wrapped piece of paper into a tight little coil. And so I have to kind of keep unwrapping it, but it means I can sort of change this surface and have a really kind of nice, nice soft surface here to move the, um, the charcoal dust around and try and get that where I want to go. I want a bit more highlight right here, so I'm just going to erase what I have. Notice how, again, this is not a drawing process. If this were a drawing process, I would not want to have any charcoal here to have to erase, um, but because it is more like a painting process, then um, that works okay, and I can come in there and erase that out. So that's how this medium really works well. Um, just kind of trying to tighten up a few things here. There's the edge of the sternum, a little bit of shadow right there. And in these very soft, subtle areas, this is where the blending stick can do a lot of good. I don't have to draw everything. I'm using the existing, uh, existing charcoal on there and kind of moving it around to put it where I want it to go. And then the eraser is an important part of this as I'm trying to kind of soften and blend up all these areas here. I think uh, on this clavicle, remember I mentioned that the bone that is really close to the skin is very noticeable. Take that down a bit. That's often where you'll get the highlight. So I'll put a little bit of highlight right there, right there along that clavicle. In the same way, the sternocleidomastoid muscles, they're getting a good bit of highlight right here. Notice the parts in the face that get highlight. So we have the forehead facing the light. We have the, um, uh, the brow. Often there's a bit right above the eyebrow there that sticks out a bit. And so that gets a bit of highlight. The edge of the nose, especially right here in the point, will get highlight. Uh, the chin um, almost always has a little highlight here. And what's happening underneath is that we have bounce light, and because we're seeing the underside of the chin, we're getting some bounce light happening there, and so I'm lightening up this, this underside surface. Um, and just trying to get in these, these parts where, they, where the brightest parts are. As I mentioned, the, the lighting here is a bit unusual because it's coming from underneath. And what that means is that uh, parts of the figure are getting lit, or especially parts of the face, are getting lit that aren't usually lit. So notice how this, uh, this um, eyebrow and right between the eye and, and the eyebrow there, that's really getting a decent amount of light. And usually the ocular uh, area of this orbit is, is in darkness because the light's from above and it's kind of like a cavity in there. In this particular instance, because the light's kind of coming from below, it's lighting up here right above that eye. Now that's an unusual situation. It's an unusual lighting situation, but you know, sometimes those things happen and you want to, to uh, take care of them and notice them so that you can depict them accurately. You want to show what that light is doing. And if a light's doing something different, well then great, let's, uh, let's make sure we, we, we uh, take a look at that. Uh, also, there's usually going to be a little bit of shadow underneath that lower lip. The upper lip is often uh, very dark. In this case, it's a little bit lighter because the light is, is hitting it from underneath. And so I'm trying to suggest that here, but I'm not going to go too far with that. Um, I still want that to be, it's kind of, you know, stand out as a lip. There, there's some odd stuff happening where it's like the very top edge of the lip is getting some highlight and it's kind of casting a shadow up above. And, um, Often kind of just being very subtle with that can work a little bit better. So uh, at this point I can really define some edges here, get some of those kind of last little bits of things happening. Um, with uh, this nice dark heavy edge is going to uh, kind of define the edge of that neck. Now with the female figure, what we want is a really beautiful graceful neck. And so I'm taking pains to kind of make sure that's the case, smooth out those lines, and just make it look 
nice and, 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 uh, and graceful and continuous line there. So things to point out, a little bit of shadow right here on the top of the elbow. Again, that's because it's turning away from the light. The light being here, this other side gets some shadow. This bright highlight here, again, that's the bone that is, uh, that is under there. As we move on down, this white, uh, my white Conti crayon, I'm uh, really trying to find the brightest parts and put that highlight in there. Um, sometimes you'll notice there's a bit of bounce light that lightens up the underside of the breast. And so I'm suggesting that here by going a little bit lighter right there. So there's like a little bit of shadow that comes down here, but then a little bit of light area right um, at the very bottom edge where it meets, uh, where it meets the chest here, the, the rib cage. So just trying to suggest that a little bit, kind of that's happening just a little bit right here. See, there's a little bit of bounce light right on that bottom edge. So I'm getting this shadow part coming down here and leaving a little bit of light edge right there to suggest that, that bounce light. Okay, a few of the things that I mentioned that didn't get recorded, and I'll try and go over them again as I'm darkening in this uh, shadow side right here and uh, using my blending stick to kind of pull that together. This is the abdominal arch. This is the edge of the rib cage. And also right here, it's catching the light. It's catching the light right there. And so I want to show that. I've erased out this uh, edge and um, I can even kind of darken that background to um, make that pop out a bit more. I want those highlight edges to really be seen. So by erasing out, drawing reductively, thinking of the eraser almost like a white um, paintbrush, I can erase out there and kind of paint this along right here along this edge and then use the white to go um, to go a bit more and so notice how there's a bit of a shadow here that shows a change in direction it's going up and going down and this line is the abdominus rectus there's a pair of muscles uh, this would be a six-pack abs for anyone who is uh, lucky enough or puts enough time in to have those six-pack abs of the abdominus rectus now our model does not have six-pack abs but there's still an indication of that there. And so this dividing line, which is a good, right there in the middle, a good line to have to be able to see that, um, that's showing the division between those two, the, the pair of muscles. And so again, it goes down, it goes up, and it goes down. And I might put just a little bit of white right here, just to kind of accentuate that highlight right there. So again, we want to show this up, down, up, down, the contours of the surface, and you do that with light and shadow, especially if you have the kind of right light set up. Um, for example, right here with the navel, just a little dark hole. Notice how right here I've got a hard edge, and then right here I've got a soft edge where it kind of gradually sort of tur curves around and sort of fits in with the belly. And a little bit of highlight right here. Again, I'm going to make sure I erase out first my charcoal. And I'm going to put a bit of highlight right here on this edge. That's going to accentuate that edge right there. There we go. And um, it was kind of nice. So um, there's a lot of area to try and cover here with the shadow. And so I'm just doing that, again, drawing lightly using the broad edge of my, my charcoal. I get a nice flat edge there, so I can do that. Bring this in, and if I want to smooth that out, I've got to change some tools here. But again, the uh, blending stick going in perpendicular direction to my strokes. So this is kind of looking pretty good right here. Um, there's usually a bit of roundness around the navel. Um, and so I, I can suggest that by erasing out some more of this area. We want this to kind of go up and then blend softly into the areas around it. And so that's what I'm doing here with this eraser. Just lightly, lightly erasing. I'm trying to kind of move that down there. I could get my white and just gradually blend that in. Again, soft edges versus hard edges. Looking for soft versus hard. Hard edge, 
soft edge as we kind of blend things together. Now we've got a bit of a little bit of fold of skin that's kind of coming up right here near where the legs are hitting in, in uh, the pelvis and so I can erase erase right here and show that happening. So see how as I erase that and it gets lighter it's kind of coming forward. So um, the uh, the uh, darker parts are going to recede in and kind of go back, like right here. Let me see that. And the lighter parts are going to come forward. And so right here, we have the, the leg, which changes direction. It's coming toward you. So you've already got the shape in there. It's very foreshortened. I started with kind of like an oval shape. But what's really going to show that change in direction is the change in lighting. So there's a definite edge right here very very definite hard edge as the skin kind of folds uh, up against itself and it makes this crease and so that hard edge right there I'll just kind of erase and bring this down like that that's going to help show that change in direction I really want to get that and show that change in direction the idea here is we want to show that this uh, leg is coming forward very much coming forward and isn't getting lost in here where the pelvis is. And so, change in direction right here, we're showing by a very definite change in value. Very light here. And there's actually a pretty heavy dark line, and that crease I mentioned going right down there. And so I'm just going to keep that going like that. As we move into the shadow here, the bottom of the crotch, um, it's all pretty much in shadow. And that's uh, working well right here. <clears throat> Take the leg in, kind of like that. But we do have just a, a decent amount of, of shadow here. And um, about as black as you can get, that's working okay. Brings us into the foot. So these really dark areas, um, that's the kind of contrast you're looking for, right? These really dark areas that contrast against the lighter areas, that sort of... Um, dynamic balance of dark versus light really makes it interesting. Now don't go too overboard with the dark areas. Dark areas need to be um, fairly limited. If you go overboard with them they kind of lose their impact. So right here we've got the, the, the darkest darkest parts of shadow. I'm just kind of suggesting that here going about as dark as I can with my, uh, with my charcoal. I grabbed another charcoal and for some reason this uh, one same same number as the previous one, 6B, it actually goes on a little bit darker. But notice how I'm just trying to suggest this right here and um, I, I'm doing a lot of blending with this uh, with my blending stick here just to try and, and, and soften things up um, and we'll do a little bit of uh, erasing here a little bit of bounce light hitting right there so that's going to come in together. And notice I'm also jumping around. It was on the leg, but then for some reason I just uh, got sidetracked and ended up here on this side um, of the pelvis. And you know, that's okay. The more you jump around, really the, the better in many cases. So again, we have the highlight side, and so I'm going to work in really trying to find this. And think about this as being a cast shadow. So it's going to start off with a pretty hard edge, and it actually fades away and gets, gets uh, have a softer edge fairly soon. And so I'll just kind of erase out a whole bunch of stuff here, kind of clear that out. And then with my blending stick, I can soften that edge. I can suggest a little bit of darkness, just a little bit right in here, and that will suggest it's like almost like the skin folding and wrapping around. So to keep thinking, if you want it to go up, it's going to get lighter. If you want it to kind of go down, it's going to get darker. And so I'll just suggest a little more highlight right in this area here. Um, just by loosely adding the white as I come to the edge. Loosely adding the white a little bit right there too. I can even kind of blend that a bit with my, with my finger. I'm not going to blend it with the, um, 
blending stick because that will all of a sudden mix a bunch of black in there. But the finger is a good blending tool too. All right, we're working our way down, which is looking pretty good. I'm just going to continue going here. And uh, again, look at the, the dark areas. Um, at this point, I can really start going dark. And as I tell my students, don't go dark too fast. But now is the time where I can really get in those, those dark areas. And so from what I'm seeing here, this is almost, almost as dark as it gets as I come along this edge. Almost as dark as it gets. And so you can see this charcoal pencil is really putting down some nice, nice dark values here. I'm going to try and soften that edge. And I'm um, trying not to lose, trying not to lose this dark line that I made where that crease where the, the leg connects. And I can actually take my chamois and kind of wipe away. This is a good way to kind of wipe away very lightly and kind of lighten up that area right there. Um, the, it might work better than the eraser in, 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 uh, in this case. So I try not to erase really, really dark areas. Uh, what I try and do is, if it's really dark and has a lot of loose charcoal, I'll take the chamois and wipe it away. And <clears throat> then after I've wiped away all that and got it as close to the paper as I can, then I'll take the eraser and then erase off what is uh, left. And then of course if I need to go even lighter, then I will use uh, the white, right? But so notice how I can use this blending stick and really get some, some nice um, soft edges here. And that's really what I'm looking for. This is a core shadow. So the core shadow is going to be very soft. Look at that blending happening. It's very, very subtle. This is a soft edge. Think of this like a, a cylinder, because that's really what the leg is. The leg is a cylinder. It's rounded. And so as the light hits it and fades off into shadow, you're going to have these soft, rounded edges. Now I could kind of emphasize this a bit more. I'm going to just kind of emphasize this line and tighten it up with a little bit of white right there and kind of take that sort of right down there just to give it a little bit more highlight, a little more highlight down this middle. That may be a little bit more than what I'm seeing in my source material, but I'm just kind of adding that to kind of pop that area out. I just kind of want to make some, some, some fun things happen. I want to make sure that leg really looks like it's coming forward you, uh, toward you, and so the good way to do that is with, with contrast. The more contrast I have there, the more it's going to look like that. So I might um, lighten this a little bit more right in there. There we go. Oops. Okay, now we come to the knee. Knees can be kind of tricky. And this one's in a lot of shadows, so we're not seeing much of it. But notice how it's very dark right here. What that means is it's turning away from the light. So this knee is mainly in shadow. The knee is very angular. If you have nice graceful curves and lines with the legs, the knee often is going to have straight lines and be a bit more angular. And so I'm suggesting that right here by having some kind of angular lines at the bottom, but then also this change in, in value. So this shadow right here is really showing me that that knee is changing direction as it's coming down here. And we'll kind of darken that part right there a bit as we go down there. Okay, so this is a bit rough. I'm gonna fine tune this right down here. <clears throat> but I'm gonna keep my shadow side Keep, make sure that's the shadow side. And right here where it contacts the ground, I'll put some really dark areas. Kind of like right along here. And it can even kind of continue some suggestion of shadow on this side as well. And if you can do anything to sort of make the figure contact the surface where you're dealing with the figure in space and, and, and uh, uh, suggesting what's going on around it, that's really better than just having it floating there and not uh, kind of connected to anything. So just some suggestion of shadow right here really helps, you know, ground that and show what's going on. Okay, so um, we have some bright highlight right here. I'm going to erase out. 
There we go. Erase out my charcoal and put a bright spot of highlight right there. And that shows that this bend is facing the light. And I'll take and I'll sort of lightly take that up and try and connect with my bit of highlight right there. There we go. And a few more things I'm going to fix here. I'll make it a bit lighter around here. We've got more highlight kind of going down here. And this is where the edge of the leg is sort of bending and um, the muscles kind of sort of squeeze and compress together right along there. So that's how I'm suggesting that with highlight. There's a little bit of, of uh, suggestion right there in the shadow, and that's probably the kneecap. So right there, that patella, which is just popping out just a little bit and catching just a little bit of light. And so these are fun little details to be able to put in. And that's what can make this kind of come to life here. And so I'm going to define this edge a little bit more, just a little bit of line work right there, and then define that edge of the leg a bit more too, like that. There we go. And I think I need to maybe bring a little more highlight right along here. That's, that's about it. That's pretty good. I've got some cast shadow, just a hint of cast shadow on this, um, this edge of the leg as the other leg is kind of interacting with it. Maybe it's a little combination of core shadow because it's turning away already and a hint of cast shadow. So I'm just putting a little bit of darkness right there on that. Okay, and that'll probably work. So jumping around again to this arm. Again, the arm is a cylinder. Cylinders really do explain so many things that you see on the human form. And what I can do here is, notice so there's the highlight side, and there's this core shadow in the middle, but I can also do a little bit of reflected light at this back edge here. And that can be a nice, nice little detail. Just a little bit of reflected light. It actually serves the purpose of making it look a little rounder, which of course is what we're looking for here. Now this is our highlight edge. And so to really pop that out, I can put a little, a little more tone in the background. And I don't have to have a harsh outline. I can use the contrast in values. I'm going to use my eraser and try and pull this out here. Uh, again, kind of thinking like I'm painting with white. I'm going to use my eraser and pull this out to show this edge here of the, of the arm. There we go. And then take the white and really kind of do that nice kind of crisp edge right there showing that highlight right along there, like that. Making sure I'm constantly checking my source material and not doing too much drawing, you know, just baking stuff up. But I want to make sure that I'm getting something accurate here. So uh, this is just kind of the final stages as I'm trying to, to finish this drawing up right here. Um, a few more things. There's often a little a little hint of shadow right in there. And that's this little pit, a little darkness where this supinator group is wrapping over right here on the forearm. And there's this little, little pit underneath as it goes down and faces the other way. And right here we have a nice bit of, of, uh, of a highlight right there as well. So this little hint of darkness right there is a nice thing to have. And that really helps to describe the anatomy of what is happening right here at kind of the inner pit of the elbow on the other side there. All right, so getting pretty close here, looking pretty good. I'm just going to continue this shadow side here uh, along. Continue this along. And as I mentioned, the wrist tapering, there's that wrist taper right there. 
So you want some really, really thin, delicate wrists. Make sure you keep that in mind, those wrists don't look too thick. It's, if anything, you kind of want to err on the side of, of, of tapering them down. That's better than making them look, look too thick. So, reductive drawing with the eraser, as I try and create these highlight areas along here. And again, notice how this hand is very angular. There's a definite change in direction at the wrist. And so I'm just going to kind of pull this down here with my white, like that. There's a definite change in direction and almost like a bit of a bump right there. And that's the, uh, the wrist. That's the um, edge of those wrist bones making that, making that very drastic change. So you may want to make sure you get that, you know, just a little hint of, uh, of an outline there can help pull that out, either that or, again, kind of darken, darken the background behind it. We want those shadows to pop and to really, really look nice. All right, so let's see here. <clears throat> finishing, up, finishing up the hand, we're kind of lucky in that this hand is mainly hidden behind this leg. All right, so hands might be a topic for, for another day. But it's really kind of hidden behind that leg. I'm going to continue my line right here. And now I can, if I need to, start doing some, some more racing. See, my initial gesture sketch, I had these really, really heavy, thick uh, strokes here to suggest the fingers. And you know, that's all right. That's what we want. But now I can come through with my eraser and I can erase out the parts that aren't needed as we come up here. So again, this is a bit of a highlight area. It's not quite as bright as the, it's kind of turning away from the light. The light's kind of going this way. We have a little bit of that there. I'm just going to suggest what I can on that. So we've got there's a finger right there, there's a finger right there, and then they kind of come to like that. And then a little bit of a hint of where the thumb would be, which is about right there. And that's it. You don't really need to do a whole lot with the fingers. You just kind of need to suggest where they are. And you don't need to worry too much. I'm just going to put a little bit of highlight along this ridge there, a bit of highlight like that and take this up and kind of, you know, connect it with the main part of the hand. And we have a bit happening right here, and right there is the thumb. Just kind of the base of the thumb happening, and we want to kind of suggest that the thumb is, is extended out like there. And uh, I think that's all we need, really. It's a bit wider right here, I think. And I'm going to just finalize this line. But I think that's about all we need there for the hand. Again, we're kind of lucky in this one in that it's, it's hidden behind the leg. And speaking of this leg, let's kind of work on it. And notice this foot is complete shadow. It's just a dark, dark, dark silhouette. And that's okay. So let's just keep it that nice and dark. Uh, that's going to just have some nice contrast with uh, other areas here. And I'm going to look here at uh, the edge of the foot and the crotch and where the, the uh, legs are coming together. And I'm just going to think about this as a, uh, a negative space and try and draw that shape around there. And I think this will, this will work for us here. There we go. I'm just going to define this area right there. Okay. And there we go. Now, notice we have the, this cast shadow. I'm going to suggest that cast shadow here. And the foot is kind of getting lost in that cast shadow. We're actually seeing the lower leg here. And it's very dark, like here. What we're seeing right here is kind of the side of the calf, the gastric nemius muscle. And it will, it's a big, powerful muscle, and it kind of bulges up, especially when the leg is bent. And that's what we're seeing right there. Okay, so my blending stick to the rescue. And uh, just kind of take all this together here. There we go. And now this, 
this gastric nemesis is catching more light, and so it's kind of coming out a little bit right there. And we're seeing that definition. That's nice. And again, here's this heavy crease where the leg is bent. We're going to darken this bottom edge of the gastric nemesis as it's kind of turning away from the light. We want to make it look rounded and not flat at all. There we go. And uh, same thing with this knee. Again, it's going to be kind of a bit angular. That knee is often angular. We'll suggest some of this cast shadow going along here. And it really kind of goes underneath here, like that. And off we go. So I can take my blending stick and soften that edge right along here. Make that work for us. Same thing with this edge right here. See that? Now let's take a look at this leg. Again, mainly in shadow. All right, so this part here, very, very dark. I'm just gonna try and quickly block that in using this wide edge of my charcoal. And come up here again to where it's meeting the meeting the pelvis right there. And it's a bit darker in the middle. So our core shadow is in the middle. So it's a bit darker right here. And then we have a bit of reflected light right down here. And then it goes back into shadow. So it's kind of interesting. It's kind of like some shadow, a little bit of reflected light, a little more shadow. Now it's kind of rough here, but with my blending stick, I can really quickly pull all that together and make it look pretty nice. And that's what I'm hoping to do. Remember, this is kind of a fast medium. So the idea behind charcoal is that you can you can cover lots of area very quickly because you can lay down lots of it quickly and you can move it around uh, very quickly. And kind of get it to do what you want there. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Um, I might darken this part here a little bit. That suggests it's curving in. And the trick is I want to get that kind of nice curve in, but I don't want to I don't want to lose this dark line here. I want to have like a little bit of that, you know, to see that division between the leg and the pelvis right here. So I want to make sure I make sure I keep that right in there. We have more highlight right here along this edge. And I'll just kind of erase out here. We have a bit of almost like rim lighting right there along that edge. So that's pretty cool. I'll toss in just a little hint of white right there. And we have a little bit of kind of dark right there. That was a bit too much. There we go. A little bit of dark right there. And then I'll take this highlight area and kind of bring it down a bit. Again, with the leg, it's really big, really big and round. And so we want to suggest that with all this um, uh, shadow and have it be really nice and soft. And that's going to just, this soft transition from dark to light is really going to help us see that it's very curvy and round in this area. So very, very... Uh, smooth and nice, nice curves here. Okay, and so we're going to come here to the knee and let's see what we have happening here. See if I can fix this a little bit. Kind of like the other knee, we have a really bright highlight right here. Right there. And again, it's facing the light, but that also is telling us that's kind of where we're coming to the bone and, uh, and it's catching Catching that light there. Maybe a bit right there. There we go. And I'll just kind of maybe take and move that up a little bit. Okay, so we're coming down here. We're gonna have a bit of a dark fold right here. And then a little bit of a line right here. And here's the other side of the kneecap. That kneecap is right there. And here's a bit of a dark shadow where it's kind of turning away, away from us. 
we have some dark, heavy shadow right against the edge of that highlight, right along in there. But we need some darkness here to kind of show the this top of this gastrocnemius muscle kind of folding back in. Okay, I'm trying to finish things up now. It's getting pretty close, but I could do a, a bit more here. Uh, this is actually a good time to sort of uh, maybe step away from the drawing a little bit and sort of really take a look at your source material, kind of squint and see um, what's, what's going on, what's happening that, that shouldn't be happening, things like that. And uh, often to see if, uh, uh, how the overall values are working. So it's actually really important that the things work overall um, as a whole, as opposed to one little spot looks good, another little spot looks good. You want to kind of see how things look overall here. And you can step back and kind of squint at your source material, squint at your image, and see you know, what, what really needs to happen. And often little things will kind of pop out to you. Like for example, I might want to darken a little bit more right along here. There we go. Um, I think I need to kind of darken along here and improve so the what's happening right here so it doesn't look like a weird, a weird crease in the leg. Um, perhaps get a bit darker right here, right up against all this uh, sort of musculature and stuff that's happening with the uh, with the knee as the thigh thigh muscles kind of bend together. Kind of make that make that work. Uh, perhaps it needs to be a bit darker right in there. And um, it's a good time for use with the blending stick. Just take kind of go over things with a final little touch, move things around sort of where they where they need to be. Uh, I think I need to kind of make this part here a little more dark, a little darker and, and, and more concise. Um, I'm going to darken these shadows along here, really just kind of hiding this, this back foot in those shadows so that um, it's just, just a dark shape of silhouette. And I can work on the shadows a bit more, try and get them to be, um, be a, bit, a bit better. Um, soften those up. Uh, definitely want some, some nice darkness right along here. If you're dealing with shadows, right where the shadow is, is, is uh, being cast, that's where it's going to be at its strongest and darkest. And so if anything, I'll have it really dark there. And then it should fade away and get more diffuse, so softer edge and lighter as it moves away. So I've got this real darkness, nice darkness right there that helps connect that knee to a ground surface. And then it's going to fade away getting sort of much more diffuse as we go along uh, like this here. Um, since the hand is actually contact, contacting the surface here, I want to put some darkness right there. Put down that white, make sure I don't put any white in my shadows. So just trying to finalize, finalize this aspect of things really diffused, even kind of goes a bit sort of behind the fingers there, and I can uh, kind of take them. The fingers are actually, as I'm pressing down, are kind of bent a little bit like that, so I can suggest that there by kind of curving over the fingers are, are joints, all these joints working together, and so I can do that right there. It'll put a little bit of a suggestion more of the thumb, I kind of close that off. I want to open that up right there. For the thumb. Make sure it reads as a as a thumb. So a little bit of a little bit of space right there. Coming down there like that. And uh, I think I went a bit too far there. I made that a bit too thick, so I'm just gonna have to wipe that out. Do some erasing. There we go. And then, I should probably get in a better position for drawing here. There you kind of finish that up where it needs to be. But this is the time to kind of put in those last, last little details. I 
as you're looking, looking at items here, I'll darken this a little bit right there, closer to the ground. So all that's looking pretty good. Um, need to suggest a little bit more right there, a little bit of darkness happening right there. That shows the bend of this gastric nemus. This is kind of going in right here. We want this big kind of rounded area. And we'll kind of put a little more right there. So that's looking pretty good. Again, this is a nice time to use the, uh, the blending stick and just kind of blend um, do the final bit of, of blending with areas and clean up some edges right here. Get the white and try and make sure you've got those nice um, nice clean highlight areas. It's also a good time to kind of look at uh, hard versus soft uh, changes in color and and, uh, and uh, shadow and all that. Can be an important part here. Um, we do work right here with, with the light. We do have kind of a highlight side on the areolas. So I'm going to lighten this up a little bit right here. Everything responds to light and shadow. It's actually kind of light right along here as well. So everything needs its own amount of, of, of detail there. As I may have mentioned, the nipples are going to cast a shadow, usually. And so often you just have like a little bit of shadow area on the one side of them. And uh, that's, uh, that really helps there. You want them to see to show, uh, to show that they're sort of st sticking up a little bit, and casting shadow is going to do that right there. Okay, I'm softening the edges right here just a bit. And um, sometimes the nipples themselves will have like a, a hint of highlight as they're catching the light. And so I'm suggesting that here with them just a little bit. And these are the final final details as you're going through here. Just look for anything that seems to be out of place. Can I do some, some final softening and smoothing here, putting, uh, putting shadows where they should be, softening edges. The soft edges are really going to be what makes this as they contrast with the hard edges right there. So soft divisions. Hard divisions, I'm going to take this up a little bit more. Again, this is where that pectoral muscle is interacting with the arm. I just want to kind of soften that, make that a nice, a nice area right there. We'll bring this up a little bit more. Soften this kind of pit of the elbow there a little bit. Often there's a bit of a line right there um, in, the, uh, in the arm. And uh, Sometimes you'll see like a bit of a line right here where these, the tendon kind of moves on into the base of the thumb. Right there, like a bit of a line or a suggestion of that. And we're seeing some of that right there as well. And uh, this is about done. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Hopefully some of the techniques that I use can, uh, can apply to what you do. This is a great way to think about drawing in general, but these techniques really do apply to charcoal and similar types of, of media. Um, remember they're much more of a painting medium and that's kind of how you want to how you want to think of them and that's what they're designed to do that's what they what they do well oh, and a little bit of cast shadow right there from these fingers there we go see these tiny little details here that just really really make it work you need to um, get those in there and that will kind of take your drawings to the next level that comes at the end. You know, doing details like that in the beginning, that comes at the end. Everything in its place. Well, hope you've liked this, and I hope it's been helpful. So, if it has been, let me know.